Hey there guys and gals, it is F1 Backwards here and welcome to my top 10 something of the year. Only this time we are looking at a top 10 and it's the best AAA games of the decade. So this one has had my head well and truly blown. Simply because there have been some amazing, unbelievable and quite truly freaking fantastic games that have been out since 2010 up until now. Now I've put many a game in this list and I've taken a good few out as well. And there are definitely a few surprises in here and ones that you'll probably, you know, you will expect them. But I apologise right now if a game you want isn't on here but a slight warning. This list contains no Call of Duty games. So if you feel aggrieved or even complimentary in my choices, just let me know in the comments below. But, you know, let's keep the debates friendly, shall we? Now in other videos there have usually been honourable mentions and things like that, but just to add to the difficulty to myself, I've kept it as a pure strict top 10, which I don't actually know why. So with that being said then, let's begin. And we kick off our top 10 with what could be a surprise, but it is the Assassin's Creed Ezio series. Uh, Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and Assassin's Creed Revelations. Now, after the initial excitement and somewhat disappointingly repetitive first Assassin's Creed game, Ubisoft came back with a bang, not once, not twice, but thrice. And first off, I know number 2 was released in 2009, but, eh, well, you know, it's fine, it's fine. The rest were out in 2010 and later, so we can get away with that one. <laughs> So Assassin's Creed went from being a non-linear style game to basically a sandbox where free roam was introduced and people loved it in the second one. With close to 200 missions in number 2, none of it felt like an actual chore even when collecting a ton of feathers. Brotherhood got even better as they introduced a the multiplayer which was well received and well liked within gamers and critics alike. Although it falls, sh I'd say just short behind number 2. And the third sequel in the game, Revelations, was very much the same, with added extras in multiplayer, and the fact in the story you were sometimes playing as Altair, which many people lost their shitesen over. In a good way, of course. With the only criticism really being that the game was feeling a bit too... sort of all too familiar to its predecessors. But, nevertheless, this series really boosted Ubisoft, and another interesting thing was that, in number one, we only seen sort of two months of Altair's life, and in the Ezio series, we saw 23 years of his whole life, and I really thought that was a great touch about the series. Sadly, the Assassin's Creed series didn't really produce some memorable games after these, i.e. freaking Unity. Ugh. But games like Black Flag and the recent resurgence of Origins and Odyssey have catapulted it to being a great series once again, but the original Ezio series remains, and always will be, one of the best. I think Avery or... Thomas too, or just trying to scare us. From one parkour legendary game right to another, and from one game with Nolan North to the other. And let me just say before I get pounded on, okay. Uncharted 2, regarded as one of the best games ever released, was in 2009. So the second best game of the series, but definitely one of the best this decade, Uncharted 4 A Thief's End Takes the Reins. Now it's usually hard to keep up a consistently excellent series, let alone when getting to the fourth instalment. But Naughty Dog had done this so smoothly, brilliantly, and with such emotion in each game, it's actually sad to think there may actually never be another one. So gone were the days of Nate being basically half near to death at the very beginning of the game. Number four starts with protagonist Nathan Drake playing Crash Bandicoot with his wife. But if you thought this game was going to be a slow burning procession into retirement, you're dead wrong. The whole supernatural thing and the pirate booty... Nah, I'll stick with treasure actually. Yeah, takes a little step back while the more grown up sort of strange relationships if you will between characters takes centre stage. It's the game that gives you still so much adrenaline yet pulls off some fantastic emotion story wise. It's a case of Nate with his brother pulling off one last huge score with the risk of destroying his new found family life. Well, if you played it, you know exactly how that went, and that epilogue, man. Wow, a fitting end to a brilliant series. 
Now with there being so many racing games in the genre, Forza felt like it needed to do something different. And so in came Playground Games along with Turn 10, and so the Forza Horizon series was born, and the first game was a brilliant success. It had a very test drive unlimited feel to it, but it was such a brilliantly designed epic adventure with so much to do that sadly, Forza Horizon 2 really sort of failed to step up to the plate as an amazing sequel. Uh, that one sort of towards the end for me just got quite repetitive, quite boring, and it was one of those games in which I thought I actually cannot wait to finish this game so it's done. So back to the drawing board then. The expectation was that number 3 was meant to be an amazing game, still rifled through many minds, but thanks to number 2, hype wasn't totally there, although tons of people still wanted it. What we got from Forza Horizon 3 was something beyond our wildest dreams. Set in the Australian outback, the game from the off just felt so different than that of its predecessor. The cars handled beautifully, the game looked exquisite, there was so much to do without it getting too frustrating. The challenges were excellent and not too over the top. Then when you're driving in the outback, if you were to you know, just have a stroll through without doing any races, it was a very relaxing and still very fun experience. But not only that, they added Blizzard Mountain and then freaking Hot Wheels which both were incredibly fun and not too long, so it was just perfect. Overall, it was pure joy to play, and Forza Horizon 4 actually almost beat this, as that's an absolute stunning game too. But again, overall, number 3 just about lays claim to be the best Forza game of the decade. Okay then, so I had to decide really between Red Dead 1 and 2, as both are, to put it lightly, masterpieces. But in the end, I had to give it to number 2, based on how much it improved on absolutely just everything from the first game. Shootouts, hunts, heists, horse riding, the brilliance of interaction with the NPCs just seem to work so well and so smooth and so much better. And it's one of those that will keep you up playing until 4am when you said, oh, I'll just do this last mission at 9pm. Now again, it has faced its criticisms, as usually it does with Rockstar. Such as employees saying that they've had to work 100 hour weeks and getting sued for name badge and imagery rights. But on the other hand, this game has received critical acclaim for those who have played this. Thanks again in part to the secondary characters feeling like actual people. Something that was maybe missing in previous Rockstar games. There's honestly so much more I could say, but the best advice I can actually give is just go and play it. And Rockstar, we thank you for this piece of art. Now everything about this game just had me drooling pure Homer Simpson style. This is another example of being one of the greatest video games ever made. First off, the map is just so, so huge. And I mean, your mama so big, Grand Canyon joke, huge. You could explore for hours and forget there's even a main story. So it's always a case of, ah, just done this side quest, onto the main, no, oh, but this seemingly innocent looking human wants my help. The voice recording is so good actually as well, it took two and a half years to complete. Now another amazing thing about this game, and it could be easily missed, is just how complex the story actually is without compromising the game's open world. The attention to detail is brilliant, the gameplay, the narrative, the combat and visuals all make for a damn tasty game. And again, one criticism it did take was due to small minor technical issues. But this is a case of the good definitely outweighing the bad. Now Henry Cavill as Geralt in the Netflix series is also a must watch. So play and watch The Witcher. Trust me, even if you haven't got the time, it is worth doing. We're doing this. Not anymore. Things have changed. It's your fault. Now again, this was another close call between games. It was this one and Gears 4, but... Hmm. Now was it the emotion of playing and growing up with Marcus and the gang? Uh, potentially. But I mean, don't get me wrong, after the horror that was Gears Judgment, Gears 4 felt amazing, the story and graphics and everything felt absolutely fantastic. But Gears of War 3 for me just felt that little bit overall better. The story is intense, it plays with your absolute heartstrings and makes you want to keep playing to find out a lot more. This is without a doubt the best campaign of the series bar none. And the multiplayer just got better from number two as well. A good improvement as well. 
Not to say Gears 2 isn't a bloody amazing game, because it is, although 2008, so can't be included in this list. It was even better than number one in terms of gameplay and everything. So the criticism for Gears 3 really was that it didn't seem to stray too far away from the formula that number two made so successful and so therefore didn't really cause many surprises. Plus the ending is always a hard one to get right and it didn't do it total justice in my opinion from that brilliant original trilogy. Still though, not as bad as a Mass Effect 3's ending, eh? Huh? <laughs> Still though, one of the greatest trilogies in gaming with an unreal game in Gears 3. And speaking of Mass Effect, here lies without a doubt the best game in the entire series, but it just misses out on a top 3 spot. Now it really starts off from the very beginning too, the Normandy being ripped to smithereens, the Alliance being murdered to, well, death, and what follows is a climactic suicide mission where you have to be on point to save everyone. If you mess up, someone dies and that's on you. Now remember, you've spent the entire first game building relationships and getting attached to these people, so from those moments, you know this is going to be a special game. Super intense and sweating your balls off silly after that opening. Now the game is basically one big sort of evolving thing, as in player actions can help a character grow, and those same crew members can also inform of how Shepard can grow. Also, this is home to the best villain in the series too, Cerberus, and it's not as easy as, you know, there's the bad guy, let's just go kill him, it's a weird and wonderful case of, do you work for him, is he using you, etc, etc. Now everything in this game is utterly enthralling, fantastic and it keeps you on knife edge for the majority, and can really piss you off if you accidentally do something stupid. Okay then, here we are at the number 3 spot, and it was again so hard to decide what to actually put as this top 3, but I feel this is a good fit to start it off. Now if you've played God of War games in the past, you'll know that they are some of the most brutally violent and epic games about bar none. You get to fight and kill Zeus, have boss battles against the huge Kronos, and the Colossus of Rhodes, and the likes. And of course, not to ever forget the epic ripping the head off of Helios. But for all that revenge and epic adrenaline and big pump action, none of the previous games did it quite like the 2018 version. Now a new change in direction with the more open world sandbox style game was delivered and boy didn't it. Not only were there new camera perspectives to bring around new gameplay possibilities, you see as Kratos smashes his axe through enemies, now again, this is a violent game, but with a lot more understanding and relatability as Kratos has his blossoming relationship with his son Atreus. Normally, in my eyes anyway, remakes or games starting fresh again don't usually work or do the original any justice, but this is one you'll be itching to play again and again, especially if you've had a bad day at the office. Down to two, and this is quite simply one of the greatest games ever, ever made. And I know I've said that a couple of times through this uh, top ten, but this is beyond anything. Now to those who may not know, they could look at The Last of Us and think, ah, uh, it's just another zombie rip-off game, I'll just stick with Resident Evil, thanks a bunch. But oh my god, how wrong could anyone like that thinking be? It starts off quickly with, spoiler, spoiler if you haven't played it. But, um, but come on, I mean, it's been out since 2013, so, you know, you should have really played it by now. But the main protagonist, Joel, and his daughter, looking for safety, only for it to come to an abrupt end, and it's straight in the feels with that one. But the whole story goes, sort of, as Joel meets Ellie and is tasked with escorting her through a post-apocalyptic United States, their relationship blossoms, and you get so attached to these two that anything harms them can harm you in a weird way. Again, this game has received worldwide critical acclaim, aimed at its excellent story, its narrative, the gameplay, sound design and just so much more. People even stated that the combat was a refreshing change to that of other games. So yeah, you'd be pretty hard pressed to find someone who doesn't like The Last of Us, 
but you'll want to play it now and as soon as you can because The Last of Us Part 2 is scheduled for release on May the 29th, 2020 and has already won awards for most anticipated game and most wanted games. So, yeah, you know what you're dealing with here. So what do you want? You don't know who the fuck I am! So then, just before I get to the number one spot, here is a bonus game. And I know I said at the beginning there would be no bonuses or honourable mentions or anything like that, but I lied. So, sue me! <laughs> But this, I feel, does deserve a mention, and that is Life is Strange. Now, of course, it's totally different to anything on this list so far, and you may not expect it to be here, but I cannot even begin to say how amazing this game is. The story is just one of the best I've ever played, and had me hooked from the very off. To find out about Max's powers, to simply ordering bacon from Chloe's mother's cafe. Now, with it being a game of choice, it can affect your gameplay completely, but it's one of those that really makes you want to go back and pick the other option just to see what would happen. So many variables, so many interesting moments, and so much emotion through the game, you don't know whether to laugh or cry. I won't actually put any spoilers up here though. The twists and turns and where you end up also get you pissed off, but incredibly invested. The Life is Strange Before the Storm and Life is Strange 2 are out and are very, very good games, you know, exceptional even, but they just don't hold a torch to Max and Chloe. Good guys, bad guys. We're friends. Why? And here we are then, the number one. Numero uno, the big zero one. And this may have some people rather deflated and disappointed. Others think that it was to be expected. And a lot more maybe just enjoying this one. But Grand Theft Auto V for me anyway was easily the game of the decade. I mean, where do I even begin with this? Now, any Rockstar game that gets released always comes with a huge buzz around it and it usually delivers, even though GTA 4 wasn't entirely perfect. First off, the fact that you have three main characters with completely different personalities and you get to play as all three was a huge um, uh, turn on for everyone playing. Well, maybe not a turn on, but it was very exciting. The humor in it is extraordinary, especially the banter between Franklin and Trevor. Then there was the emotion of it. The writing was done so unbelievably well it feels like you're actually part of the game, like you've known the characters for so long. Now, the open world and map was excellent, the variation of missions was brilliant, even though they all had the same aim more or less towards the end. Doing heists and getting rich, bitch. Now, there is a reason this is the fastest selling entertainment product in history. $800 million in its first day alone, and over one billion dollar dues in its first three days. That is simply unreal. Not only was the single player absolutely incredible, but the multiplayer aspect has gone from strength to strength. You know, it had its problems to begin with, but it was amazing fun when you got going. But even now, in 2019, going into 2020, thanks in part to the casino update, the number of online players was apparently more than at launch. So that just gives you an indication of how popular it still is. Plus, obviously, all the DLC they've released as well, with the very brilliant Heist DLC, and you got so much fun for hours. But of course, because it is Rockstar and GTA, controversy is never far behind. In this case, there was violence towards women, although there was tons towards men, so that balanced out well, right? Apparently? Um, yeah. But also, there was the trampy hookers in the game, and, you know, the ones at the beginning during the loading screen, apparently were rip-off likenesses of Lindsay Lohan and Karen Gravano. See what it did there? Wink, wink. But <laughs> those lawsuits were dropped, and of course the big one, which was the interrogation mission with Trevor, which got the most attention. But where there were a few backlashes, normal people just loved the game even more. The amount of awards it has won is beyond ridiculous, and it's easily my game of the decade. It was a very good choice in my opinion, but was it yours? You know, was my list a bit too predictable or was it slightly surprising? Would you have changed anything in this list or taken certain games out and put certain ones in? Let me know in the comments below, guys. I'm really interested to hear what you have to think. Looking forward to a nice healthy debate from all my 200 views and three commenters. But the most important thing, let's look forward to another amazing decade of the best games. Now, thanks so much for watching, guys and gals. I had a lot of fun thinking about and compiling this list. 
Okay, I mean, by fundamental, actually slightly stressful, but it was definitely worth it. Hopefully you enjoyed it too, and if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for 100% guides and way more content to follow. Thanks again, guys and gals, and I shall see you in the next one.